We have a very special guest, one of my favorite singers as well, no. December Rose. I you know, I've been listening to December Rose sing since we were in kindergarten. Yeah. So this is a really special interview. We had you on the radio before. We've done previous interviews, but it was online due to the COVID. So I'm so glad that we get to have December Rose live in person how are you i'm really good it's really good to see you and, and to be here today thank you thank you for, for for being here with us it's really an honor no and a problem. pleasure and we're gonna get into to all of all of the things you've been doing in terms of uh the successful uh tracks you've been releasing as well which is really amazing to see you, you dive into different things but let's talk about the last two years. You know, you know we, we had a lot of um, issues when it comes to events and just being in person, just being able to do something like this. But you did not stop. You did a lot of online events. So how was that like during the COVID year for you? How was it? Uh, I was pretty fortunate that I was almost more busy being online than than offline. Wow. Um, I it, it was weird. It was I was doing a lot of teaching before COVID and, and coaching and stuff, but I, I lost all that business because I couldn't go to work with people in person anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I rebuilt online and it just kind of became so convenient that it was like, why not? Um, so I just, you know, found new ways to, to stay busy and to use the time productively to, you know, try other things and uh, venture into different aspects of music that you know, I otherwise might not have tried. Hmm, I see that. And I noticed a lot of people were spending more time with local artists during that time. They needed something different. And I found that local artists definitely helped us, um, like, have something to do and enjoy during those hard times yeah. to keep our mind off of what was going on. So I find that more people were tapping in online and yeah. more people were just, like, just taking time to listen to each other a little bit more. And I thought it was a great time in a way for musicians, even though we couldn't see each other yeah. like um, online. I felt like a lot of us were able to take care of ourselves, our mental health, and get our craft done. So you've yeah. been going through some health issues as well. You've lost your voice recently, but it seems like you have it back. Thank God. Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's been like five weeks. Yeah, I had gotten like a, I don't know what it was, some like chest cold and mm -hmm. my voice disappeared. And uh, anyway, it's making its way back. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, it, it's bound to happen at some point. You yes. just got to be proactive. and. Like, do you always, do you feel nervous when that happens? Like, cause oh my God, it's your yeah. main instrument, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, how does it, like, I always think, like, how did Beyonce feel when she has a cold? Like, because, like, um... When you're when you're someone who works on their their vocal cords like it's an instrument, you take time to to not only develop it, you're you're nurturing it every single day. Like it must be a little scary sometimes it's, when that happens. It's a it it feels like a handicap that day. Yeah. Or for that period of time. So yeah, it's been it's been hard, but you know you have to remember it's it's a illness and that too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And so it's just hard to uh, stay quiet <laughs> and sh really shut your lips <laughs> until it comes back. Otherwise, you make it worse. So, so I'm sure you like do other things, like in terms of like writing, yeah, yeah. administration stuff, yeah, like handling yeah. your affairs and that kind of thing. So you keep yeah, you keep busy, which is which is really <laughs> good. But it's funny that you said you 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 you. It was hard for you to shut up because <laughs> it's kind of funny because you lately you've been doing a lot of videos. You've been really speaking to your fans and speaking to your listeners a lot more. You've been really getting live a lot more. Like well, not live. Like I say, I mean like reels and stuff, right? The videos have been out there. Right. What is making December rolls? start speaking out a little bit more um i think i finally got to a place where i stopped like trying and it was i just started being a bit more um and i think that that just took a lot of pressure off of okay well instead of like having to look professional i just need to be myself and like i just really need to be and i think that you know we always talk about like what's your special sauce as a person what makes you charismatic or that people like yeah. you and you know we always hear about this like being your true authentic self yeah but it feels like hard to really understand what that means when you're trying to find that authentic self and i realize that it's just that it gets it gets masked by all the pressure of like what we need to be doing and not that we're like we're always doing something but we're not being ourselves anyway because hmm. we don't have time to 
to just sit with ourselves. What do we, what do we like? What do I want to talk about today? And so I think for that reason, I just felt like I had, you know, nothing to lose. It was like, okay, well, I'm just going to show up today and talk about my Italian heritage and my name. And then like that video took off on TikTok and yeah. I was like, hey, oh, I loved it too. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like the, the thing I had least expected. Like, oh, that's, that's interesting. All right. Okay. Let's run with this. <laughs> I feel like these videos are helping us get to know who December Rose <laughs> is just a little bit more. And also we get to see a little bit of a quirky side. Well, that's the yeah, thing is like, I'm, I'm nice. really, I think like I'm profoundly a dork and like a life-size cartoon, but I don't, <laughs> I guess I don't operate from that because I feel like people wouldn't take me seriously. But then I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I am I am failing to show people a huge side of who I actually am. And maybe that's my special sauce. <laughs> it is, it definitely is one of your special sauces because <laughs> I was like, wow, like even though I, I'm, I don't come from an Italian heritage, I felt like I was able to relate to you more and it was really nice and it made like obviously when people are laughing it warms their hearts so I think I love I love your videos I can't wait to see more of your Thank videos you. and it really does relate to your, the song that you dropped uh, October 7th um, the best is yet to come right yeah yeah and what does that mean to you like I want to hear you talk about it yeah, so that was another like virtual collaboration during COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it was, uh, you know, like anybody else, we don't know what's happening, uh, what shoe's gonna drop next. And, mm. you know, we just wrote this this track online talking about like all the things we were afraid of. And, you know, like I come from a religious background too. And it was just like, okay, well, is faith enough during this time? Like, I feel like I'm like praying for something and nothing, everything looks like it's getting worse. Like what's really happening? Are you are you listening up there? Um, so um, we, I guess we, we just wrote this as like a way to to kind of vent and to talk about it, but to still feel like what's the bright side? Like if we come out of this and everything's gonna be okay, what does that look like? And and, and how long is that gonna be? In two years, you know, who would have thought it would have been two years later? Mm. Um, from two weeks to two years, right? So when we're on the other side of this, is there a chance? What is that gonna be? And I guess. That was our way to get through. Well, that's definitely a hopeful way of, of thinking about it when there are so many people who are, who are losing hope. Creating a song like that is so important for the people. And this is the power of what an artist can do is like you can sure. give somebody else a little bit of hope by just creating something like that. You know what I mean? And I, and I respect you for that, December Rose. You, you always kept it really like you always made feel good music. Even if you're dabbling in other genres, which you have been, yeah. <laughs> you always make feel good music and, and it's really nice to see. Um, you have a mm -hmm. song that is so like different from what I've been hearing over the years, but with E fixed. Yeah. Right? Uh, is, is that Tell Me or that's a different one? It's um, Seize Me. Seize Me. Yeah. Seize Me with E fixed. I was really, really not only impressed, but I was so shocked to see you dabbling in a genre like that and I just dominating it <laughs> but I, I knew you were going to do it but you. You, you definitely brought out a different side of you that i never seen before and that's the reason i was shocked i was like wow i didn't see this side of of december being expressed this way so that's been a like a very like fine line to kind of walk through because like i love so many genres and i i i guess like and you grew up with it as well right yeah, yeah. i you know had always had many multicultural friends and listened to all kinds of music and then i felt like okay if i have to be an artist i have to be like this one thing and and i always felt kind of conflicted by that um and so i guess my attitude was like okay well december rose is going to talk about all like these heavy reflective topics and if anyone else that like makes cool music says hey like jump on my track why why the heck not you know um, so yeah, this e -fix approached me he's from, uh, I think he's from Nigeria and, uh, he reached out with this track and I was like, this guy's, this guy is solid. Like, yeah, of course I'll sing on your track. And, uh, yeah, so that was yeah. kind of how it came about. Amazing. <laughs> and he's also a very successful artist as well. Yeah. And just the fact that you guys collaborated, it made such beautiful Thank music you. and it was really nice to see that happening and i was like oh my gosh like it's <laughs> nice to see because it was real music it wasn't just a banger you know what i mean it wasn't just something you can listen to it in the club of course right <laughs> and, and sway it and enjoy yourself and you can listen to it while you're studying you can listen to it all kinds of different ways yes but it was a nice island sound right it really was and it was a nice way 
of just, you know, enjoying a feel good track. You guys aced it. You Thank definitely you. did. You definitely did. Thank you. So how did you feel about that track? Did you did you love it at first when you first heard it? And be like, yes. Like I, I did well. Like, yeah, it like, was an easy yes. Like he, yes. he sends the beats, he sent <laughs> he sent the beat and he already had like his hook on it. And I was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, fill in the blanks, you know, like put put your stuff on it. Oh, that's okay. And I had never really like worked on an island track before, but I, I love that kind of music. And I was like, you know, why not? And I, I, it was, it would just came easily. And it really, it was an easy yes. It really <laughs> did like seem like it was just like something you guys, a little magic. Yeah, that's what I gotta say. It was like you guys added a little piece of your magic and be like, you know, well, you, you, you did your one like this, you did like one like this, <laughs> yeah. and then this beautiful piece came through. I feel like it's hard nowadays to to get music like that. I feel like more and more people especially after covid are are like yearning or almost like thirsty and hungry for for music like that that can make you feel something yeah. and not only just want to bob your head and dance like you, you, you guys make music that make you feel something you know what i mean and it's hard to come by nowadays so it's really important to have artists yeah. like you who not mm -hmm. only went to school for what you have done but you have studied you have worked Tireless hours on your voice and your craft. Like I'm sure you, you're you're way over the ten thousand hours right now. It, it has been a, it has been a lot of hours. I've lost track. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, definitely. But you know, like I, I think that's that's kind of what it's about. I, I I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Like I feel like as an artist, you you know you're given a gift, but you're also given a social responsibility. Like you literally hold people's hearts in your hand, and so I feel like it's my duty to you know, deliver something that's going to speak to them and that I can leave them with a little something positive mm -hmm. or something to think about. Like, you know, not to, if I'm going to take three and a half minutes of their listening time, what did I leave them with? Um, and I would like to think I left them with something positive. And, you know, like we spoke about this song in a previous interview before, but like you have raise your voice. I really enjoy that music Thank and you. it makes me think twice about even what I do sometimes and I'm like imagine like this one person who made this one track can j it's a ripple effect can make you think about something so deeply and be like you know what she she definitely has a point you know <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're not afraid to, to talk about um, even how women are viewed in the public eye, you, you, you speak about sometimes even feeling like, um, you know, like, I, I don't, I'm probably going to say this word incorrectly, but okay. objectified. You, sure. you, you said that in one of your, your songs, like, I feel objectified. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I have to say it sometimes just to remember, guys. Like, when you listen to a song over and over again, like, you can't say it. You just have to sing it. <laughs> in, yeah, indeed. I mean, um... Like, I mean, I've been wearing glasses since elementary school, mm -hmm. uh, so it was uh, it was always a thing. And I guess, like, that was an aspect that, you know, made me feel like I didn't fit or, like, didn't feel properly represented on screen uh, or even in music. And, uh, you know, at some point, even when I had my record deal, even though I'm, I'm out of it now, but at the time it was like, oh, you wear glasses. Yeah, <laughs> I wear glasses. Have you thought about contacts? Oh, yes, I have. I cannot put them in my eyes. So I'm wearing glasses, <laughs> you know? Um... But still, it, it just felt like I, a decision I had to make that, listen, like there are tons of people that wear glasses. Why is this any less attractive? And, you know, there's always going to be clap back about it. And that's kind of what the song was about. It was, I remember like specifically this one PR agent, she was like, oh, well, you know, you're not going to be able to get a gig at a club because like they want, they want sex bunnies to quote specifically. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, she's like, you know, glasses like aren't hot like that. Oh, I'm in so, shock. But what was funny about it is like that's not my kind of music anyway. So it's just like, yeah. well, what? <laughs> like I can't imagine I'm not going to be in like some yeah. cat outfit singing your razor voice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I know. Cringe. <laughs> um, so <laughs> so already it just didn't really make sense. But that's kind of how how the song came about. Well, you know what? Good. <laughs> that I'm actually happy for you that those people were able to say it out loud, which is kind of odd. I never. I actually. Like, I know it happens every day, but usually you hear about it, like, in closed doors. Yeah, they told me this or that, you know? But I'm still shocked that that happens every single time because there's so many different artists now. And everybody is, there's, like, there's so many people that 
people can relate to. There's so many different kinds of human beings. So just to have one kind of artist all the time, it just doesn't make sense. And what that does, it's actually damaging to the music scene. Yeah. And labels are now looking for like the people who they are they were used to toss out now. You know what I mean? Right. They're looking for real people. Right. Imagine, imagine how that changed. Do you think that's changed recently? About how the look them looking for. You no, know, the look that labels are looking for and. and yeah, I mean, like, I, I I don't say this with any disrespect, but so forgive, like, how this comes across. But, like, I feel like right now we're, we're, like, still at the end of a McDonald's fast food of music wave. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, so, like, the fast music wave. Um, and I, I hope it's I hope it's coming to an end that, like, you know, with TikTok kind of being such a strong platform that we're we're humanizing people again and that we're you know showing them that there are real people behind the songs that you hear and artists are not machines even though <laughs> when they're with major labels they're treated as such so That's um true. so yeah i think it's 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 great to see that that it needs to change and i think that we're on we're getting there we are i feel like we're getting there as well um i noticed like like even the songs that are are uh, popular like I, I was reading something um that people on Spotify are, are researching older songs. Yeah. Like the older songs are now getting popular once again, which is so funny because there's so many new tracks being being produced by, I'm talking about in terms of mainstream artists. So yeah. what does that say? People want that soul back in the music. They want to feel, they want to connect. And this is why it's so important to have real people, real artists, who don't have to be someone else just to be on a stage. Yeah. We need that again. Oh, 100%. And I also feel like, I think about what we're, where we're going to be in 20 years, and like, are we going to be singing back the songs that we're hearing on radio now? Hmm. You know, like, I, I play a lot of parties, and we're always playing the same types of songs, and they're all throwbacks. Why are we throwing back songs of the 90s and early 2000s that pe even the 80s that people are like die hard for and like there's a reason for that it's because they were those songs were like built to stand time yes and, yes and now like i said we're kind of like in the mcdonald's era of of music and it's just about making a banger after banger but like is it really communicating anything is it speaking to people and i because it's so fast i don't think it's crafted to withstand time and you can see like in the music world we need that there's yeah. so many artists. We're losing so many artists. It's it's such a shame to see because it seems like we're not expressing ourselves the way we used to. We don't we don't hear um, as many songs about love even or loving yourself as we used to. We used to hear songs about like even Christina uh, Aguilera when she was singing uh, when she had that song. Uh, don't look at me. Yeah. Uh, wasn't, um, uh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Like what happened to those songs? Right. And I find this is where the, the artists that we live amongst are, are definitely making a difference because they're making songs like that and they're not afraid. And independent artists are definitely changing the game. I For really sure. think they are. And I feel like the moment they, they reach that, that label level is when you see a little bit of them dimin dim dim diminish. Yeah. Well, I think it's just, you know, it's so competitive and the workload is so intense mm -hmm. that you have you know independent artists that are really hustling at like who am i what do i want to say like what am i giving to people and then when, when you you like worked so hard you finally get that deal and it's not everything you thought it was and then you're still in this deal you're contractually obligated to fulfill it and you make music a certain way because they know that at this moment in time it can sell and you know i don't think anyone's wrong like the label has to make money. The artist wants to stay true to their craft. It yeah. is a business, and like you still have to put food on your table and pay your rent, and you know where you draw the line, right? So you got to kind of please both, and sometimes you lose a little bit of one side. But then ultimately, as the artist, you make that decision. Like, do I keep grinding it out as an independent artist, or do I get signed and like live my dream artist life minus the passion? <laughs> so that's perfectly uh, said. You know, like. I don't know. I feel like the you know the grass is always greener on the other side. When you're independent, you want a label. When you're in a label, you want to be independent. Independent, yeah. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. This always this always seems to be the case. The grass is always greener on the other side, and that's why it's so important to just enjoy what you do. You yeah. know, to do something that you love because whether it's something you love or not, it's it's gonna there's gonna be 
bad days, good days. It's going to be easy some days. It's going to be hard another. You yeah. know, I feel you on that, and I and I respect that. I really do. Uh, let's talk into some of your your. Let's talk about some of your photo shoots, actually. Sure. Let's get into that recently because it seems like lately, like I said, you've been been posting more videos. You've been posting more photos. It seems like you're just showing the world a, a, a not like a new side, but but like a different side of December Rose, especially through your photos. A little bit more skin sure. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it didn't. It helped that I that it was a summertime photo shoot, so I could. Mm -hmm. you know, I know it was summertime, so I could yeah. like, reveal some shoulders. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that like that I'm entering a new phase. Um, you know, on a, in a personal way, but also I think musically, my my next project for 2023 is influenced by Disney and Enya, and I'm taking it back to like what like brought that magic into my life as a kid that I was like, I want to be a, an artist. Like this is magical. Wow, you like Enya, by the way. Yeah, oh, I, that, I that, only, that only that was like nap time song in kindergarten. Wow, yes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, so I kind of like brought it back there, and what triggered the whole project was um, I I had gone to to Disney on a family rekindling trip, and uh, I was totally captivated by the Avatar virtual reality ride, and I literally cried like a fool. I the kids were all like really impressed, and I was like you know grown up there bawling my eyes it's so beautiful it smells <laughs> yeah, good like yeah and and i guess it just awakened um this nostalgia side this you know dare to dream again and to have this new project and that's what the photos were about it was to kind of like bring this like fairy tale vibe um you know bring adults back to to childhood what you know what what were you dreaming about then and as an adult have you lost your dreams mm. so mm. is this is this also why like um because you you have a song when we were young yeah. And boy, do you sing that <laughs> powerfully. Sometimes when I, I heard you sing it with a live band, it was even online, I was like, man, I wish I was like right in front of you. Oh. Like, and, uh, you made me tear up when you sang, when we were young. I was like, oh my God, when we were young, I know this ever rose. And like, is that like another reason you made songs like that? Is just because you, you sometimes miss something that you had back then that's just not there today obviously because now we're adults we're not kids no more right and you know even though we have to find that inner child once again but do you feel like sometimes you're missing something that was in a childhood totally mm. Ooh, that's a sore spot so um yeah so i i spent a lot of time in reflection um part of like therapy sessions you know uh but but to to go back there and to kind of make peace with with the past and certain things that um i guess we're shape, we're sh help shape me as an adult, but I think we're also a hindrance as an adult. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I lived a bit of this Peter Pan syndrome um, that I wanted to go back in time and like fix things and live things differently so that I could, I could be, I could feel like a more complete adult. Um, and so the last couple of years has been a lot of digging back into that. Now, when we were young was written a while ago, um, mm -hmm. but all this new project kind of touches on this area of like making up for lost time and dreaming again and just yeah. reconnecting with that inner child to figure out like okay am i what are my intentions for the things that i do in my life is it is it honest is it because these are things that i want or is it because this was a form of revenge or is this a form of me just trying to like rebel or you know seek attention or validation and i guess i wanted to just make sure that everything was always like no this is because this is what i want and this is what i want to give people um and so that's kind of what the project is to is aimed to do is to help people like go back in time and think and and go back to simpler days maybe being a child for some people was great and like god bless you man like <laughs> cool yeah. Yeah. um but if that was the case then when you have a good childhood you're prepared to be a pretty successful adult and sometimes when you're not when you don't uh adulthood can just seem a little bit more labored <laughs> and difficult yeah <laughs> To like really find around. yourself, you know. So yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. That was powerful. So it definitely does. Like just talking about that song when we were young, it definitely. I I can feel it more now. I can feel where that power in your <laughs> voice was coming from because it really was from here. It really was from 
from something that you were you were going through and you brought that into your music. You can tell you write your own music. Just by knowing you, you can just tell you you, you do write your own music. I do. Yeah, because I have, I'm like, <laughs> wow, December Rose, you really do. I have to give credit to my yourself. co writers. Like I Please. do have co writers and like they, they, they have been great, like Stefano and Jordan and uh, many of the others that I've worked with that shout they, out to them. Yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to because, them. Yeah, I I mean I I can come to the table with an idea or with like a, a completed song and then they always just add the extra sauce to make sure it's like even better than I thought. <laughs> wow. Wow. So well, I can't take full credit when it's not due. Still, still, but you know what? You gotta shout out to the ones who help you. you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh let's talk about your festivals actually. Let's get right sure. into that before we have to go. You sure. had lots of lots of festivals. Peach Festival, um, the um, I hope I say this right, the it's Ital okay. Festival? Ital yeah, Festival? yeah, yeah, the Italian, yeah, the Italian Festival, they, okay. they changed the name a couple times. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they always do, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the Italian Festival, you had so many festivals online and, and, and live, you really kept busy when it comes to those festivals, congratulations on all of that success. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I needed to, you know, stay busy like anybody else and, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't know about like some of the artists, but like I had terrible stage fright for and, and it comes back often if I if I'm like out wow. of, If I'm off stage for too long It'll not... it'll creep back up and like getting back on will be like a mini heart attack every time like, okay, we are live <laughs> um, So so yeah, I think that the virtual the virtual festivals You know, even if I couldn't see people but I still knew I was live and there were people on the other end So it was like, okay Rose like get your stuff together mm -hmm. now um, just the same practice, you know. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. That was really good. Well, you were killing it. I seen Thank some you. clips, and I was like, "Wow, December Rose, she is doing it and doing it." And oh, she done it again. Another <laughs> festival. And you really did keep active as an artist. And obviously, as a human being, we go through so much, and you just didn't let that stop your grind. It was amazing. You worked with Billboard artists. You you just done so much. What yeah. is next for December Rose? Well, for 2023, it's that uh, Disney inspired project, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're gonna see where that takes me. I'm already like I'm excited for that. I'm writing the next. I'm writing the next body of work, but that's my next release, so that I can you know have time to write what comes after. And I think for the project after is to like get in touch with a bit more of that like old school, like. Never mind childhood. Now it's just getting going back to like old school, like in, in yeah, really injecting level. some soul in there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, some soul and like gospel stuff uh, into my projects and just like talking about other things. Um, but you know, if it, I, I always say like if it's if it ain't deep, it ain't worth writing about. So that's what people can I expect to you. see. <laughs> I feel you. So are we gonna hear more songs like "Seize Me" and "Tell Me" in the works? Yeah, so I am, I'm, uh, yes, I am still like co writing a bunch and uh, talking to some other artists that like make more of that style of music. Um, so we're discussing collaborations for next year uh, as we speak. Well, you know what? I just want to say before we go to congratulations Thank on you. your HMM uh, nominee, right? The, the, the nominee for the award. Did you end up winning the award? Tell the people who did not sure. know. <laughs> yes, I did. For <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Tree, yes, 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 yeah. congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, when I heard and I see that you were nominated, I was like, Wow, <laughs> that is big for best adult, um, contemporary. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Some girls, you killed yeah. that good, Thank you. <laughs> and you deserve it. You deserve your flowers. Thank You're you. an excellent artist, you work extremely hard, and it's you know, it's it's really nice to see artists who work that hard. Beyonce works like that, and look where it gets her, so I just can't wait it's like, to see kids. you know. <laughs> You have to work hard at your craft. It just, it, it, yes, there's a little bit of magic, but you need to work hard. You need to go to those lessons, especially if you're a singer. Go to these singing lessons as well, and uh, you just don't stop. And you also you. help people through your own lessons as well. Yeah. You just don't stop, and I hope you really don't because you just make such beautiful music, and you're so bubbly, mm -hmm. and you you shine so bright. And I hope that doesn't change. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> Good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. You deserve your flowers. We got December Rose on 514 Online Mix Radio. 514 Online Mix. Priscilla. Priscilla. Chopped the flint.